Well, hey everybody, Matt Klaskowski here, and uh, we're gonna take a look at the brand new version of Photomatix Pro version six. So uh, if you've been into HDR uh, at, at any point in the last you know, 10, 12, 13, 14 years since it's really kind of been mainstream, um, Photomatix is probably a, a program that you've heard of. It's really, it's, it's what I consider, and I think a lot of other people out there consider really to be the father of all HDR software. I think it's a lot of a lot of our first introduction into HDR. So they've got a new version out. Uh, we're gonna take a look at it in this video. I'm gonna show you some of the new features. I got to beta test it for a little bit and uh, it's actually finally released so I can, I can share a full video with you. But we're gonna take a look. We're gonna do a, a merge here from Lightroom. Um, and then I, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you what the new features are, but I also wanna compare it to a Lightroom HDR merge, and then also a single photo edit on one of the photos too, because I, I think it's just interesting not to say one's better or worse than the other, but just to see some of the differences there, okay? So we're gonna kick this off. We're inside of Lightroom. You can see I've got one, two, three, four, five photos. So we're gonna launch this from Lightroom. You don't have to. Photomatix is also a standalone program, so when you launch it, uh, you can go jump in here and you can browse and you can load uh, You can load up your photos straight from within there as well. But it's got really good and tight integration with Lightroom. It makes it really simple to use. The idea is, you know, we bracket. We bracket kind of a what I would say a, a challenging lighting scene, you know, shooting into the sun here. You're gonna have dark versions of the photo, you're gonna have bright versions of the photo, and sometimes it's it's tough to get one shot that can cover everything. And we've all seen, you know, if you get a really dark version, this is shot on a Canon 5D Mark III. Um, so if you, you take a look at a really dark version of this, and we try to uh, we try to open up some of the shadows and some of the exposure, you're gonna see what can happen down here. We get a lot of noise inside of those areas and not every camera is the same. So, um, you know, all your, all your cameras are gonna be a little bit different. I shoot Sony, so my Sony reacts a little bit different to dynamic range. But in general, whenever we try to open up severely dark areas inside of a photo, we're gonna get a little bit of, uh, we're gonna get a little bit of noise in there. So a lot of times people will bracket. So let's go ahead and reset this. Not talk too much about why to do HDR. I want to really concentrate on uh, what's new inside of Photomatic. So we're going to shift click down here in the film strip. These are the five photos that make up that bracket. All right. And honestly, most of the time, I only do three. I separate them by two stops. So minus two, zero, plus two. It's not going to hurt. I've got one and one inside of there. It's not going to hurt or not hurt it to, uh, to select all of them. So we'll just head up here to the file menu. When you install Photomatic, it's going to get installed into your plugin extras. So we'll go down into export to Photomatix Pro. And then you get a uh, dialog box here that uh, it's not really new if you've used Photomatix before, you've gotten a similar dialog box. It's just gonna ask you a couple of questions about, you know, it's gonna try to align um, any alignment problems inside here. So you can keep that turned on or turned off. I usually turn it on here and I'll usually say, you know, on tripod, just cause sometimes even the slightest little movements will jump in there. Um, there is ghosting. So ghosting would be if something's moving in your image, uh, we can try to de-ghost this. I don't have that in this case here. Uh, there's noise reduction. Uh, noise reduction is something, and, and that's, this is important. I think most people watching this are probably not just using one app to edit their photos. And, and, and if you are, you're probably not just using Photomatix. So what I try to do is just incorporate this into my workflow. I am only gonna use it to I'm only gonna use it to do what I need it to do that Lightroom doesn't do or Lightroom does differently, which is the HDR merge. So Lightroom's got really what I consider some of the best noise reduction that's out there. So I'm not gonna ever jump into another app to do noise reduction. So I really, I wanna get into Photomatix, do the merge and get back to Lightroom so I can come back into my happy place uh, as soon as possible. Um, reduce chromatic aberrations, you know, sometimes I'll go ahead and turn that on. Again, we've got that inside of Lightroom, but you know, a lot of times with HDR merging, uh, chromatic aberrations get even worse, that little fringing, especially around contrasty areas like we'd have over here in the sky and that rock. So I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll usually take all the help that I can get there. Then at the bottom here, it'll, uh, if you're coming in here from Lightroom, it'll let you automatically re-import to Lightroom. So I'll go ahead and turn that on and stack it with the selected photos. Click export. And what this is gonna do is, um, you know, grab these photos from Lightroom and then it's gonna bring them over into Photomatic. So it kind of does, it does all of the export and the merge for you. 
And somehow through the magic of post-processing video editing software, what took about 30 seconds has happened in just about a second for you. Uh, so let's jump in here to the, uh, let's jump in here to the settings. Now I'll really talk mostly about what's new, but I'll go through and process the photo here. Uh, number one new thing is going to be under HDR settings. There's a new one called tone balancer, which is more for realistic HDR. So if you want, you know, your landscapes to look a little bit more realistic or your architecture to look a little bit more realistic, that's the one to go to. The one that we used to go to uh, was details enhancer. And, and you could get into trouble with this as, as we did, you know, everybody that tried this started to crank all the settings up. Wow. Look at all this. It's crazy. And, uh, we ended up with HDR photos that looked like this. Um, so we're, we're past that to me, this is still has its place. I think for, you know, I've seen a lot of still life, dark, grungy, you know, uh, just, um, urban decay type things that really work well for this. It works well for this style, but I think for your landscapes, for your architecture, you're probably gonna go here with the tone balance option. Uh, you've got strength, which is gonna be your overall contrast and detail. You know, somewhere 50, 60 is pretty good. You go too high with it, you see it opens up the shadows quite a bit there. So um, starts to get a little bit fake. Lighting, think of lighting as a shadow slider. So it's really, that's what it's doing. It's going to the really dark shadows in the photo. So. Again, we don't want it to look you know, out of the world, so we usually pull that back a little bit. Brightness boost. This one will brighten the photo, but it'll typically leave the bright highlights alone, and that's, that's the biggest part. So I can add, add some brightness to the photo. You can see it opens up everything up, but it'll typically leave the brightest of bright highlights alone inside of there. Micro contrast, kind of like a sharpening, kind of like a clarity slider from Lightroom. Uh, it's, remember how I said you know, Photomatix has a look? To me, this is part of the look. This is part of the look that, that we get from Photomatix. It's, again, it's got a little bit of sharpening, a little bit of detail to it. So, you know, it's, it's, I don't call it a sharpening slider, but if it looks like sharpening, I, I'm, I don't care. You know, I probably won't do my sharpening later because the photo looks sharp enough. And then if you want to smooth things out a little bit, which is actually not bad for this photo, I kind of like it. Um, if you want to smooth things out a little bit, you can go down, uh, go negative. It doesn't necessarily make things blurry like Lightroom does. It just kind of, it just kind of uh, it smooths it out is the best thing I can say for it. So maybe I'll boost that uh, strength just a hair more. Pull back on the lighting a little bit there. Color settings. So we've got the, uh, that one of the other new features is the ability to jump into just about every color here, kind of like HSL inside of Lightroom. I typically don't do it here. You know, my goal is to get back to Lightroom as fast as possible, but you know, you could jump in here, you know, move your temperature slider. And, uh, and then the nice part of another new feature is it's got a brush. So if you don't want to do it all, you can go over here to the brush and you can actually brush it out of certain parts of the photo. And so you've got a little section here to detect the edges if you wanna be a little bit more precise. So I'll go ahead and clear that and close it. Uh, next section below that is gonna be blending. So there's another new feature inside of here. In fact, two new features. One is if you wanna get a more realistic, in fact, let's bring this back to zero. Uh, if you wanna get a more realistic HDR, and you think, you know, you think, hey, I'm starting to get too bright or too dark, uh, you can go and you can blend it with one of the original photos here. So I can go blend it with one of the darker ones and you can see I've got an opacity slider that'll start to bring that back in uh, if I decide I need to, to bring in an original photo there. And then the other nice thing is, is it's got a brush. So I can also go in here and I can brush in that photo rather than doing it with the opacity slider, which is basically an all or nothing or somewhere in between, I can go in here and just brush it in. Okay, so that's another new feature. As for our, our general settings here, that's pretty much it for the new feature. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit next here. And, uh, and it's gonna take us into another area because at this point it's kind of bottling this up and saying, okay, I'm gonna give an image you can save. So one of the other new features, which I don't use is under straighten. If you wanna straighten a horizon line or some vertical surfaces that are, are crooked with your architecture, you can do that right in here. Most people I know are coming into Photomatix from another application. We're kicking off our workflow somewhere else. Um, for me, it's Lightroom. And for me, Lightroom's uh, lens corrections and transforming and th those tools work just fine. So it's kind of like noise reduction. Uh, I think Lightroom does a great job at those things. So I'm not really going to try to do it somewhere else. Okay. Now, 
If you're not coming from Lightroom, you could just do file save. It'll give you a couple options, save as JPEG or TIFF. Or if you're coming from Lightroom, you just hit save and re-import. And then what that does is when I jump back over here to Lightroom, you're gonna see it kind of just merges it into the other group of photos that I had here right in between. Uh, I would kind of recommend you guys at least hit P for pick or hit a five star or do something because um, what you want to make sure you do is you don't lose this photo, but it does group it with the first photo inside of the uh, inside of the bracket there. So that is kind of nice if uh, you want to keep things organized in there. Um, and then from here, I think finishing touches. I think the stuff that Photomatix did, you know, I, I didn't do any base toning inside of Lightroom before. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do my whites and blacks. I hold down the option or alt key when I do it. Option or alt click whites. Option or alt click blacks. That gives me that black and white view and I can see the black and white point. Uh, open up the shadows a little bit more if you want to. Um, HDR toning in general will, will usually leave your shadows blue. Uh, they'll be very cold. So you could go, and then Photomatix I think has always been one of the worst at that one. So you have to go into your brush and maybe paint in a little bit of warmth into there if that bothers you. Or you can just make the whole photo a little bit warmer too, and that'll help neutralize it. But that's one of the post-processing steps. If you have any noise reduction, which I, I don't think we do. I mean, there's no noise reduction left to do. So you could do that here. You could do your sharpening here, which again, I, I think we are, we are plenty sharp. So I'm not going to do this. So I saw some chromatic aberrations up there. So I'd probably jump in here and, uh, and do some chromatic aberration removal. And why not throw a little bit of a vignette on that baby right at the end there? Looks good. Um, so that's kind of the workflow here. Now, one of the things that I did is, is I wanted to compare this to, to Lightroom's HDR merge, all right? Because Lightroom's got an HDR merge in there. So I wanted to compare it to the, to the two. And so what I did is I kind of merged one in Photomatix and I merged another one inside of Lightroom. Um, and I got it as close as possible. It's impossible to get them exact, but this is the Photomatix one. This is the Lightroom version. Photomatix, Lightroom. A couple things I'm seeing. Photomatics version, I like the highlights a little bit better. Shadows are definitely a little cooler. Um, Lightroom version, shadows are definitely not quite as cool, more neutral. But the Photomatics version, ha it, remember how we said it's got a look? And that's what I mean, it, it's got a look. I don't know what that look is, I don't know how to describe that look, but it's got a certain look. I'm not saying one's better than the other either, all right? but they each have their own look. And that's that's kind of for you to decide, you know, which one do you like better? So, but I think the highlights held up a little bit better here. Again, you know, maybe I could have tweaked the sliders from the Lightroom version a little bit more uh, to get them there. It's it's really tough to, to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, Lightroom's got a couple of halos here. Could have just been the way I, I pushed the sliders after I edited it too. So I don't have as many of those in Photomatix, but it, you know, if you use certain settings in Photomatix, you'll get high, you'll, you'll get halos too. So you always got to watch out for that. Uh, here's another one. This was a single photo. It, it, you know, I'd never have to HDR this. There's not enough dynamic range in this to HDR. There's no bright highlights or anything. So uh, I just did a single photo edit inside of Lightroom, brought it over later to here inside of Photoshop. And then I did a, a merge inside of Photomatix. And that's the thing. Sometimes you, you do that HDR merge for the style, not just because um, it's got a high dynamic range image, even though that's what HDR stands for. People have moved over from using HDR because they have to, and they've moved to using it for style. All right. So if you like that style, and you can see there's a clear stylistic difference here. I think this is a little flatter. Shadows are a little bit more open, not quite as contrasty as the Lightroom version. And I punched up the shadows quite a bit in this photo here. So um, there's definitely a look. Saturation looks a little bit different between the two. Again, that's going to be hard to, to get exact between the two. So I don't know that that's a reason to go with one or the other. I think you could make either one look the way that you want. But they definitely have a look. And that, that really, at the end of the day, besides just an HDR merge for architectural or landscape photos, I think 
there's a time where we do it because it's got a certain style that we like. And that's it. Since day one, I've always known Photomatics has a certain style, which is, has really been the, the reason why um, I don't think I've ever left it for my HDR photos. Okay, uh, guys, there is a uh, there's a link in the description. You can go uh, download. I'd say download the free trial. It's fully functional. It's got a little watermark on it. If you do decide to purchase it, there's a code in there as well. Um, and they gave me a code to give to you guys. It'll save you 15% on the price of Photomatic. So hope you'll check that out. Go look down in the description for the links. My name is Matt Kleskowski. I will talk to you again really soon.